How is it going, folks? Welcome back to Part to Prem. Today is episode number 31, and today is the first episode I'm recording after my Christmas break. And I don't know about anyone else, and I used to get this feeling with my office job. I've come back, I've opened up Football Manager, and I can't really remember what I was up to. It feels like I've been gone far longer than I have been. One thing I do know is that Jude... Jude's very good. In the background, I'm going to just leave you to enjoy a montage of goals he's scored in recent games. We have been on a really good run of form, one defeat in the last month. Today, we've got three games coming your way. But yeah, Jude Soonsup Bell is absolutely amazing. I don't know if I've ever had a player who's played at the club for two months who's instantly become a fan favourite. You know, he's earned the scarf icon on his player profile. The fans love him. I'm starting to love him as well. Uh, I'm slightly concerned about the fact I am giving him £220 per goal. But if these goals get us promoted, I guess it's fine. I have just had to check the transfer screen myself to make sure that no transfers have happened since last episode. I can confirm no transfers have happened since last episode. But what has happened is a whole lot of matches. Of course, last episode we took on Rochdale, who were right up there at the top of the table, one of the favourites of promotion. We demolished them 3-0, and that gave us confidence. Four clean sheets in a row, 4-0 win against Borenwood, 4-0 win against Woking, 6-0 against Aldershot, 3-0 against Dagenham. We did only beat Macclesfield 5-1. Although in this game, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not mistaken, we did lose our run of clean sheets with a goal conceded in the 97 minute. The game against Woking, by the way, was in the FA Cup. In the second round, which we will be playing today, Torquay of League One, currently fifth in League Two, so not a bad little team. And while knowing that we've got Worthing in third and Yeovil in second to play today, I was hoping against Cheltenham we could get that inspiring result that would really give us some momentum and confidence. We lost 2-1, Look at the match stats and drink them in. And understand, this is why I left it on this game last episode. I, I thought, this game happened, I thought, you know what? Need Christmas. Need a Christmas break. Away I went. I'm back today. I'm still not over it. Anyway, triple header of matches coming your way today. FA Cup second round. Games against second and third in the league. It's going to be a big one. Let's run the intro and get straight into things. A warm welcome back to Park to Prem. I've got to shake off the rust, get Matt Sharp. Hopefully we're going to achieve that today. Looking at the league table, this table was a little bit closer as of last episode. We have now played 20 games. We're still not even at the halfway point in the season, but we are currently a point ahead of Yeovil and two points ahead of Worthing. We played them both today. Last episode, we took on Solihull Moors and Rochdale, and I feel like we did okay in those games. I'm hoping that with our new player, who is the player with the highest average rating in the league, we're going to be fine today. And like I already mentioned, we are also playing in the FA Cup second round today. So loads of football manager to be played. Torquay, good team. I mean, their key player, if you're wondering, is Dara here. Is Dara better than Jude? Now, you know what? I don't want to turn it into a measuring contest. I'm going to say it out loud and proud. I think Jude is a better player. Is, is that a hot take? I don't think it is. You might remember last episode, we did get our youth recruitment up to five stars. If you're wondering, have we had the youth preview through? Uh, we haven't had it through yet. I can tell we've not had it through yet because it's all just showing Ds. I realised I came to this screen because I couldn't remember either. But now we both know. I think we'll have it by next episode. Now, I did talk all about Jude in the intro, and I can't really attribute all our recent form to him because, as you saw, we have had a lot of clean sheets. When you don't concede goals, you're not going to lose games. And I suppose when you look at our starting eleven and, in fact, the entire squad for the last five games, there is just a sea of green ratings. Players playing absolutely superbly. Jude is leading in the way on an 8.6 let's not pretend otherwise but Norman Hamilton on a 7.32 has been good in recent games another player who the fans really really love and defensively Lissa and Welch I'm, I'm becoming attached to them and even the fullbacks are doing well of course we've changed to play with wing backs on attack this year Ricky D and Slate looking very good in this when we first made this change we did concede a few I've stuck with it I'm very relieved we've stuck with it you can just see here look at the sea of green ratings for Ricky D and over on the other side Slate also looking really, really good in his recent games. Very happy to have him back in the team. We have had a few players away on international duty in recent weeks. In spite of all that rotation, though, we are in a good spot. And today, we take on Worthing in our first game. They are currently third in the league. Their media prediction was 20th, so they are massively outperforming things. A good team, going strong. We've got an away day to Woodside. Sounds like a shopping centre. Let's see if it's got much to offer. So for today's away day, we are heading south. We head north, I feel like, quite a lot to New Newcastle way. Today we are heading to the south coast. We are heading to Worthing 
And I assume somewhere around here, there is a football club. I mean, I hope there is, otherwise I'm in the wrong Worthing. I found this, the Elite Football Performance Center. This isn't Worthing's thing. What is this in Worthing? I mean, it looks like an insane facility, but like it must be used for something. Ah, oh, okay. It's, it's Brighton's training ground. Yeah, Worthing probably don't train here. I'll tell you what, if you want your pumpkins, come to Worthing. Look how big this pumpkin field is. It's absolutely massive. In case you can't tell today, struggling to find the football stadium. Definitely didn't cheat to find this. Uh, ig ignore the searches on the left-hand side. Worthing FC, here it is. Woodside Bar next door. I am concerned about the fact it is surrounded by houses. Although I feel like if you live in one of these houses here, like build a loft conversion, you can just watch all the games for free. There is also bowls. I think this is bowls next door. It looks like there's people playing bowls at the time. Solar panels, the enemy of the away day. Although this isn't even connected to the football stadium. What street view options have we got here? The answer is one road. There's, there's one road. Worthing, 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 Worthing. Here is Worthing football. Stadium. There's the bit to get in. Here's the outside of the football club. It it doesn't feel imposing, does it? Have already looked around the football stadium. Uh, this is the best angle we're going to get. So, yeah, it, nice red stand. Nice red stand. I will give you a little bit of Google Earth action today, out of pity. This is the only away day. The main stand actually does look kind of imposing for this level. I mean, it was nicely painted red, wasn't it? And to be fair, they have got stands on all four sides of their stadium. So that is a rarity at this level. It does actually look like quite a cute little football stadium. I love the location of it. I love any football club where like, the stadium is just in the middle of a load of houses. Proper old school football ground. Car parking wise, uh, there's roads to park on, I guess. Gonna admit it, kind of glad now we've got three matches because that was bloody woeful. Worthing, Woodside Road, nice red stadium. The main stand was painted the right colour, three out of ten. Get some car parking and then we can talk. So this is a rather big game for us. This is first versus third. They are two points behind us. And knowing that we've got Yeovil immediately after this and an FA Cup game after that, in an ideal world, we get things wrapped up nice and early here and I can rotate the team to save some legs for later on in the game. In terms of the team, this is the starting 11 we're going with. This has become largely the settled starting 11. Shipston has found a home at defensive midfielder for us. You can see in recent games, he's actually been putting in some really, really good shifts. Going to hope that continues here. And of course, a lot of pressure, I guess, is going to fall on the shoulders of Hamilton and Jude Soonsup Bell to get the goals for us. And Goma, by the way, coming back from a little bit of an injury. Yeah, he hasn't been around. So that makes this recent run of form, I feel like, all the more impressive. With him back in the team for this big one, I'm expecting a win. I feel like this season we've done quite a lot of live commentaries already, but I feel like it's been rather convenient in a weird way. I feel like a lot of the games that we've had to play in episodes against the big teams have all been back-to-back, -back, which makes it easy for me to pick the games that we cover, especially with the league as close as it is. We did lose in our most recent games, so maybe a little bit of pressure on us. Had we won that, this would be a lot more relaxing, this game here. As it stands, though, this is very much must win. Okay, throw in on the far side. It's going to be Slate over it, giving it to Ngoma. Goes all the way back to Welch. Of course, Welch has been in at centre-back since, well, midway through the first half of the season. That's lovely build-up play, isn't it? That is a lovely goal. Soon Sut Bell with the initial shot, saved by Stacey, but fell straight to Norman Hamilton. He came for our youth intake. He's still in the first team. He's still scoring goals, and... Whilst he's not got the most exciting attribute polygon in the world, you know, it's not going to make anyone stand up and take notice. In the match engine, he just finds himself in the right place at the right time, scores on his weaker foot there. Admittedly, it was an open goal. I love the fact that because of how Football Manager ratings work, soon Sir Bellu had that shot that was parried. He's on a 6.8, even though he probably had the more difficult kind of opportunity there. Hamilton, just because he kicked the ball into the back of the net, game goes, yeah, give him a 7.5. Give him that right away. Hopefully, we're going to see more green ratings from our players here as we look to bring the ball forward again. Edwards, Slate, left wing back on attack. Not the most natural wing back in the world. Sometimes that is on display, but he has looked good. Lately, we're going to force them to go long here. Lissa wins the ball in the air very convincingly. Hold Chuddy, Edwards, Judson, Sapel should go right, doesn't go right. Shipston just holding down the fort. Not maybe the most profound defensive midfielder in the world, but I'll tell you what, from a uh, kind of creativity point of view, having this man picking out passes is rather nice, as we've just seen there. Judson, Sapel keeps it alive, gives it to Hamilton. One shot, two shot. 
doesn't find its way into the back of the net. Halfway through this first half, away from home against a team directly behind us in the league, this is exactly the kind of performance I want, minus the fact, and Goma's on a yellow card. Isn't going to last the whole game, according to my scouts and my kind of fitness people. Not sure how my scouts are giving advice on player fitness, but Ngoma probably will take him off at half time. If we could get another goal, might take him off even sooner. That shot there whistles over the bar, maybe even clipped the crossbar on the way over. We're looking good in this game, but the longer it remains 1 0, the more I do have to maybe worry slightly. I'm not going to get carried away just yet because. Football manager and football, weird old thing, isn't it? You can dominate a game, doesn't mean you're going to win it. Although, with Jude through here, maybe, I was going to say, we are going to win it. Their goalkeeper must be on a really good rating here. Didn't make anything of the corner that we had from that initial effort by Jude, but there is another chance here, and it's been gifted straight to him. I was about to check the goalkeeper's average rating. It's probably in the mud now. It's 2-0. I'm not going to say that's self-inflicted by Worthing. Uh, they've tried to play like their prime Barcelona, and they've just given it to the best striker in the league. Not sure what they were expecting. By the way, I've just checked their goalkeeper is on a 7.9 for this game. I wonder if he'll still be on it if Ngoma bangs one in from here. He's already at the woodwork once. He hits it again. Ricky D. I thought for a moment might be under it. It goes up into orbit, the ball. It comes back down. I'm expecting this highlight to end at any moment, and it has. I've played enough football manager to know how it works. It's 2-0 here. Their goalkeeper is still on an over 7.0 rating. We've had an XG of over 3. We're only two goals up. They've done nothing, though. So Ngoma is on a booking. He's not 100% fit anyway. I'm going to bring Isaac Pritchard back into the fray. A player who has dropped down the pecking order this year is still unhappy about his contract situation, but ultimately... He's still putting in some good performances for us. I feel like I can bring him in here. Imagine if they score from a corner to start this off. We were so dominant in the first. That would have been a kick in the gonads. Fortunately, well, they didn't kick us in the gonads. They, they swung their leg and missed. And now maybe we can get the misery compiler. I feel like a third goal here would just wrap this up. Ricky D delivering. Hamilton turns his man. And his effort flashes wide of the post. An hour played here, we are still very much in control. It's been one-way traffic this game. Another goal, like I said, it would be the one that seals this. It's going to go back post. It's going to find the back of the net. Ships them with the assist. Lissa with the goal. There's 15 minutes left of this game here. I'm going to take off Jude just to protect him as much as anything. On at Ucom, uh, Goldsmith. Elsewhere, Gucci. You can come in. I am going to take off Edwards in this game here. Let's get some fresh legs on. This game's done. If we score more, it would be nice. But yeah, at this point, the main aim, don't get any more injuries. Save our legs. Yeovil to come up next. That's going to be, you'd imagine, more of a test than this has. This has been, well, a bit of a formality, which maybe given our recent form could have and should have been expected. We have been absolutely sensational. I mean, I've jinxed it now. I'm not, I've not even heard of the words clean sheet. I've just mentioned the fact that we're sensational. They're probably going to go up and score now. Gorman with the ball for them. Lays it to Bonds. Holdsworth in the wide area. Well, we're not paying out the clean sheet bonus today. That's that's a win in my eyes. We're approaching added time at the end of this game. And whilst there has been a few highlights in this half, the stakes have very much been lowered. As soon as we got that second and third goal, it felt like it was in control. If they were to get a goal here, maybe I would look to panic slightly. But ultimately, we are confident. We are in the ascendancy. We are playing some great football. I would love Pritchard to get involved. He has got involved. Ships has grabbed a goal. That's a goal and an assist for him. 4-1. I imagine that's that. Four minutes of added time at the end of this game. We had an XG of over four. We scored four. Very much deserved that. I think it really sums up how this game went when their goalkeeper who conceded four goals still got the best rating in their team. Good team display by us. Jude, man of the match. Goal to his name. Two key passes as well. Yeah, he was pretty bloody solid. Elsewhere in the league, Solihull could only muster up a draw. Yeovil for us did win. So they trail us still by one point. We play them in our next game in three days' time. I need to rest up the players. This game could be pivotal. Lose here. We drop down to second. Win here. We extend the gap to four points with one game left until the halfway point in the season. Also, I have just gone to the player screen here. Uh, Welch and Ricky D need rests. They'll, they'll get them later. I've got players needing rests. Ordinarily, I feel like in other parts of the Football League, the uh, December period is the most busy. I feel like we've navigated perhaps our most busy part of the season, but the fitness worries are a bit of a concern. That said, whilst I'd love to be resting the players for Torquay against Yeovil midweek, these next two games are as must-win as they get. 
I'd probably argue the Scheuvel one is more important than winning the, in the FA Cup. I've made a transfer. It's not the transfer you have thinking it's going to be. Uh, I've signed a new head of youth development. Sam Montrose has come in. This is the third head of youth development I've had in the last few years. But given where our youth recruitment is at, I really want to try and give ourselves the best chance of succeeding and getting good youth intakes in. So upgrading when necessary is just a thing that we're doing. Sam Montrose here, 14 working with youngsters, 16 judging player ability and potential. Model professional personality is absolutely amazing. And his preferred formations kind of fit into where we're at in terms of a 4-4-2 and a 4-3-3. I think in the next year or two, we probably will see ourselves moving to a wider system. So maybe trying to plan slightly further ahead with that move there. It did mean sacking Sammy Addist, who uh, not, not a bad staff member by any means, but has a worse personality. And in terms of judging player ability and potential, which are involved in head of youth development kind of generation, he's just not as good. Does have slightly better working with youngsters, but... The personality swung it for me. It is £950 a week. So, Sam, if you do bad when I when I kind of have players coming in, you will be very much in my bad books. You won't get Christmas cards. Anyway, game number two today is against Yeovil. We know the stakes here. We are slowly but surely pulling ahead of teams behind us. Rochdale have really started to falter. Worthing, of course, just lost to us. They're struggling a little bit. Solihull only drew in their last game, and they've actually played a game more than us and has four points behind us. A win here puts us in an absolutely amazing position. Did rest up the players mid-week, so that was really, really nice. It means that players are just about fit enough to all start an unchanged team for this game, but... It's not an unchanged team because A-hole Chuddy is dropping down to the bench. I love this guy, but with him being in on loan now, I feel like there's less of a reason to start him in each and every game. And I want to give Pritchard some more minutes. And whilst it maybe means that our defensive kind of aspects of our midfield are weaker, Pritchard is absolutely amazing going forward. Of course, given our recent run of good results and defensively looking sound, if we concede more than one in this game, suddenly a whole chuddy looks like the missing piece in the puzzle and I will look like an idiot. So if Isaac wants to put in a good performance today, that would be very much appreciated. Did see a couple of comments over the Christmas period about the fact that sometimes the recordings that I do, they like lag a second before a goal highlight happens and the ball hits the back of the net. It is a weird football manager thing. I've tried to fix it today. Maybe it's fixed. If it's not, I'm sorry. It's not my PC. It is literally the game freezing for game reasons. It's like the game's calculating that the ball's hit in the back of the net. I don't understand it either. Of course, given how many goals we score, it is somewhat more noticeable with us. I'm going to hope that we get off to a good start here. I mean, if it wants to lag and we score, it's a small price to pay to take the lead. And I really thought Jude was going to score there, but his shot has hit the crossbar. It's not every game in the new kind of lighting that Football Manager 2024 has, but I don't know about anyone else. Sometimes matches like this, it feels a bit too bright. I feel like I need my sunglasses on to see what's going on when the ball goes towards the floodlights at either end. Slate bringing it forward here. Hamilton, I think his shot there deflected into the back of the net. I'm going to not question it. He scored again. Hamilton started this move laying it wide to Slate, but I'll tell you what, the number three had a lot to do here. Drew in two players. Norman Hamilton, really intelligent run. I think it did deflect in. Keeper may have even got there. I'm not going to complain. We take the lead. 15 minutes into this game, just looking at the stats early on, Yeovil having a decent amount of the ball. We've had 90% of passes completed, and we are edging out possession. We are also creating quite a lot. But yeah, a lot of teams really struggle to have the ball against us. Yeovil are holding their own. I was about to say they've not created anything with it. And of course, as I was about to say that, they did just have their first shots on target of the game. And while maybe momentum is shifting slightly, Benson is over the ball for Yeovil. There is only a handful of green players in the box. They're certainly not over committing it. They don't need to commit anymore. Morgan Williams scores. He's offside someone was offside the referee linesman raised his flag i'm not going to complain williams by the way he was in our guernsey team last year in park to prem wasn't he nice to see a familiar face he looks very happy with himself okay 10 minutes left of the first off they've just had a goal ruled out from a corner could we create our own from a corner here and goma out swinger headed away but only as far as in goma who's going to lay it to the edge edwards ricky d i mean of all the players to have a shot from there ricky d is not the player i want to see doing it the right back not known for his long shot prowess. I think it was on show there. And well, speaking of the devil, he's now got the ball in our own half. Ricky D dinking it forward. Yeovil penning us back a little bit here to end this first half. They are a good team. They're a point behind us. A draw wouldn't be a disastrous result here, but obviously a win here is a 
grand opportunity to just pull a gap over them. Edwards, Pritchard, brought into the team over a-hole Chuddy today. Need to see him doing magic, and instead, he's doing a disappearing act as he vanishes into the midfield, loses the ball, and while Welch heads it away. I thought I was going to panic for a moment there. In fact, you might have heard it in my voice. I did panic for a moment, but instead, I feel like there's still something to happen in this highlight. It's a long one, isn't it? That's what she said. Engoma, Hamilton, Pritchard. He's got a man on his right. He could go left. He does go left. Engoma, Slate is the same way. Engoma threads it through. Jude, one-on-one. -on -one. You'd back him to score it. He has scored it. That doubles our lead. It's his 14th goal of the season. Our ability to just create chances for our strikers is just mad, isn't it? And to be fair, with a guy as good as this... I mean, he's not going to miss many of the chances he gets. On his weaker foot, Jude tucks it away. Could have been a very different end to the first half here. Also, we're playing this game in space, if you're wondering by the scope. We are literally just playing in space. All the stars have gone out. It's the end of the world. Does anyone else get annoyed by the sky boxes in the match engine at night? Might just be a me thing. I can't remember what I wanted to rant about now in terms of the actual game, but I'm just annoyed about the black sky just being pitch black. Don't mind me. We've had a lot of shots. I'm happy. All the players are happy. Hopefully, we're not going to let it slip here. Unlike last game as well, Ngoma should be able to last the full thing. So, uh, yeah, good to have him because he is in some good form, staying on the pitch today. Yeovil were very slow to get started at the start of this game. They kind of fizzled out as well after their ruled out goal. That said, they have started this half with a couple of shots, I noticed, appearing on the statistics, and they're bringing the ball forward here. Benison in towards Linton, headed away nicely by Welch. Ngoma lay it wide and we're going to launch it to Hamilton who I think has timed his run well there. Jude inside could square it, goes on his own, goes down in a heap. The linesman apparently has given that. There's no VAR in this league. I think he dived. I'm not going to complain though. Jude missed a penalty, didn't he? Not that long ago in an episode. Is he going to score this one? For a second I thought he'd missed it. He finds the back of the net. That's 3-0. I think that's game over. I am thinking forward to that upcoming game against Torquay in the FA Cup, but even at 3-0, I don't want to kind of change things too prematurely here. I really want to take off Jude, but he's on for a hat-trick, so it feels like it'd be rude. Instead, we'll bring in Abbas for Hamilton. I do also have one more sub, and Goma, not the least fit player on the pitch, but given his issues with injury lately... I think it's probably sensible to take him off. Whilst I was making those changes, Simpkins had the ball in his hand. I don't know why he had the ball in his hand. Presumably they had a shot. Yeovil are coming forward again. Yeovil, can you just do one, please? Can you stop trying? I don't like this. Stop it. Ball back post. Lissa heads it away. Right, Yeovil, stop this. Let's just have a nice, comfortable 3-0. I mean, obviously I'd like to score more than three if possible that would be good but I don't, I don't know as much as i don't really like paying out clean sheet bonuses it is nice to get clean sheets isn't it and we have had a little run of them lately i know we squandered the one last game and squandered the one the game before that but let's get back on the right track let it show some defensive solidity not really been tested in this game i feel like that is almost certainly going to be more a thing that we face in our next game against torquay albeit at home they're a league two team I should have mentioned clean sheets. It's 3-1 again. Anyone else getting deja vu? This is just like the last game. I'll tell you what, if they score another, I'm going to be panicking. <laughs> oh, Simkin, what a save. Four minutes of added time at the end of this game. 3-1 looks like it's how this game's going to finish. This game is another win. Would have liked a more convincing end to things, but you know what? Not going to worry about it too much. We've got the job done in the league games today that's a very nice feeling. So that was a really, really good result for us there. It was with our game in hand as well. Elsewhere, Worthing failed to win, so they could only muster up a single point. Suddenly, we're seven points clear of them, four points clear of Yeovil, and at the halfway point, a league table that looked jam-packed and close throughout October and even into this month, all of a sudden looks a little more spread out. There's a big scrap behind us. I'm hoping we don't get pulled back into that. Norman Hamilton set for a goal bonus. I mean, we'll pay him £1,500 if he scores another goal. That is A-OK -okay with me. Nine goals in 16 for this guy. Well, 16 starts for, for sub appearances as well. Doesn't sound as good, does it? But yeah, nine goals to his name. Considering he had a slow start to the year, really good to see him back in goal scoring form now. I am being one that some players are jaded and need a rest. They can have a rest after this next game. Torquay, League 2 opposition, a team battling for the playoffs. For like this will be a good game to maybe measure ourselves against the league that hopefully we're going to be playing in next year. How are we going to get on? 
we'll find out in a mo. I'm going to rest the players and yeah, I'll see you for game number three of today's episode. Okay, third and final game today against Torquay. I feel like ordinarily the FA Cup game second round would be a massive, massive game. But given how intense and tight the National League is and our current league position, I feel like today I've just been full focus on that. So the fact we've now navigated it gives me a little chance to focus on this side piece distraction. I have rested up the players. They are looking fit for the game. Couple of little bits of news before that. Firstly, and you might have spotted it here, our under 18s are doing really, really well at the moment, which is particularly pleasing. They are currently top of their division, which is nice. Last year, I think they finished third in the end. Right now, we are ahead of Exeter by, well, seven points. So only one defeat in 16. So under 18s team doing bloody good. I am keeping an eye on some of these players. And in another little bit of news, you might remember last episode, I talked about Sean McLaughlin, 31 years old, model citizen personality, discussed the fact that we don't really have a veteran presence in our team, someone who all the players can look up to, and this guy, not only is he that, he's also an absolutely insane centre-back. He'd pretty much walk into any team, I feel like, in the next couple of leagues above us. Last year was playing in the Championship. Of course, at the moment, the League 1 and League 2 transfer windows are closed. As a result of that, I'm finding there's a lot less competition when players like McLaughlin um, become available, and I go in for them, of course. He's been a free agent all summer. No one's picked him up. There is a little bit of interest in him, which I've got to be wary of. No one else has made a bid yet. We have made a bid. £750 a week, two-year deal with an optional two-year extension. I feel like it'd be a good deal for everyone. So keep an eye on this. If this happens, I'm afraid to say Miguel Freckleton probably will just leave. I mean, he was going to leave anyway. His contract's up at the end of the year, but he really would be surplus to requirements at that point. Anyway, we are going to get into this game against Torquay. We are at home for this game. Also, we get two extra spots on the bench. I should put some players on the bench. So Jasper Moon and Coventry added to the subs. Besides that, though, this is the exact same team that played the previous game. I've rested up the players. We're slowly but surely getting some green links between all our strikers. We've got a budding partnership between Hamilton and soon Sub Bell. Can I hope that they can show what they're made of? This game here should be a fun one. Kind of already mentioned it. Torquay going well in League 2. Very much challenging up there towards the playoffs. Um, with that in mind, this is a game that if we win, it's going to make me very excited for potential promotion and League 2 football next year because I feel like the gap between the current league that we're in and League 2 isn't all that big. Of course, if we now go on to lose this game, just forget I ever said that sentence. Thank you. Set piece early on. Quick free kick taken. Welch kind of half heads it away, but to be fair, Torquay still have it in a dangerous area. Pritchard, on defensive duty though, does well. And now it's Edwards trying to hold up the player a little bit. Not the best player physically, but technically he's a good player on the ball. He's done his job. And now it's Pritchard laying it to Ricky D. That is an ambitious ball. Soon Sup Bell's going to keep it alive. Hamilton's back post. And he shoots straight at the keeper. You can't help but feel like if the roles were reversed and it was Jude in the middle, he would have scored that. That was actually a really good chance. In this game so far, we have been creating a fair amount. We've had about 50% of the ball. They're yet to have a shot. When we go forward, we create stuff and we might be creating something here. Jude... Oh my word, get, get, he's offside, isn't he? I've seen the flag at the bottom. You've seen it, I've seen it. We've all seen it. I was about to say, give that man goal of the season right now. Doesn't even count. I don't think it would have been goal of the season anyway, to be fair. Right, corner, Ngoma. We've had one shot chalked off. There's a bit of a scuffle in the box and suddenly we've got a penalty. And who is over it but Jude? Jude, what can you do for us here, mate? He steps up on his right foot. I'm expecting, but he's missed these before. And he's he's missed this one here. Torquay, get it away. I hope that's not an omen for the rest of this game. Okay, there's immediately another highlight. No time to kind of calm my nerves. Ball back post. Lissa wins his header straight at the keeper. But we are creating so much in this game. We've got over a 2xG inside 25 minutes. We've not scored, so the xG means absolutely naff all. But we will, well, I was going to say, we'll look to build something out from the back. We're going all the way back to Simkin. I'm not sure why. They weren't pressing us. But here the man, dressed as a pumpkin, really got inspired by our trip to Worthen. He's going to look to launch it forward. Edwards, Pritchard, filling in for whole Chuddy. What a ball that is. What a finish that is. That one is going to count. It's 1-0 and it's what we deserve. Did you notice it? Did you, did you know the finish? The, the volley into the ground? That's a new feature in this year's football manager. Look at this. Look at little knee, little volley down into the ground. Keeper can't get there. Bounces over him. 
And, uh, well, I thought like we deserved that. Soon set bell, goal disallowed, penalty miss, goal scored. All in the space of 10 minutes. It's been a mad first half, and yet we've just waited a long time for one final highlight. Torquay, have they had a shot yet? Have they? They've had a shot. They've not hit the target yet. Ricky at right back. Inside, Pritchard. These two have linked up a bit already. Pritchard skips past his man, but is tackled. Ball could be put in here. It is put in here. And I think the keeper just saved that. It's 1-0 in this game. It probably should be a lot more. Just as a reminder as well, win here, FA Cup third round. We'll have the draw at the end of the episode if we get through here. Otherwise, next episode we'll start with an FA Cup replay, which I really don't want to have to do. So if we could see this result out, that would be nice. Torquay building the ball out from the back. Roberts at left wing back for them, looking to bring it forward here. Ricky D, lovely little tackle, plays it inside Jude. Gives it back to Ngoma. Players left, players right. Hamilton through the middle. He should have scored. He didn't score. It doesn't matter. We've got very lucky there. Jude finds the back of the net. It fell. I was going to say on a plate. It didn't fall on a plate. It fell on his face. I don't think he knew a lot about this. The build-up play, don't get me wrong. It was nice. It was pretty. This ball through here was delightful. But the way in which the ball's actually found the back of the net... I feel like we got lucky. Our play here, I am going to make some subs. Ships done on a booking. I do not like. A hole chitty on you come. Elsewhere, Edwards hasn't had the best of games here, so I'm going to mix things up and Gucci's going to come on in the midfield. And elsewhere, Goldsmith on for Hamilton. We have been so good in the matches today. I went into this game with a little bit of nervous anticipation. We've been on a good little run of form, but we'd lost that one game against Cheltenham, albeit completely against a run of play. Of course, I feel like the last episode the win against Rochdale was maybe just an indicator of what we were capable of. And I feel like we have just elevated our level over the last month. And you're seeing it on display in this game here. We are bullying Torquay. This is relentless. Goldsmith's on off the bench. He's fine in the back of the net. Ricky D has an assist. Three matches in a row in today's episode where we've taken a three goal lead. We've not kept a clean sheet in any of them. Why did I say it? Right, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I'm sure it's okay. Why are they on the attack again? Welch, get it away. That'll do. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. I've been watching Shrek at Christmas. Can you tell? Soon sup, Bell. What can you do? Options inside. Pritchard is one of them. Forces a save out the keeper. Corner here in Goma. It's the short corner routine. They've not picked it up. I'm looking at Pritchard thinking, you're going to do something magical there. He he's jumped over the ball. That's magical enough. And then Goldsmith... Doesn't get that. I thought it was about to be a penalty given. No idea why I've just been shown that corner. We won't question it. And I'll talk here on the attack. Why is there so many highlights all of a sudden? They've, they've scored, by the way. The, the clean sheet's gone. I'll tell you what, the script writers on today's episode, they really need to get more imaginative. That is three games where we've gone three and up and then conceded to make it 3-1. Although... We've now made it 4-1. There's just goals flowing everywhere at the moment. Realise I just skipped the replay there. Uh, it is 4-1. That was a hat-trick for Jude against League 2 opposition. So if there's a question mark as to, is he going to be able to do it next year? I'm going to just nod and say, yeah, I think, he'll, I think he'll be okay. Will we be able to do it defensively next year? That feels like an entirely different question. It's 4-2. What is happening? Just to be clear, it's not me editing this like a madman. We've just had three goals in four minutes. Like It genuinely has been like that. Good news. It has mellowed out. We are going to get the result here. Five minutes of added time at the end of this game comes and goes. We were the better team. Jude with a hat trick. He's pretty bloody good at football, isn't he? It's kind of weird how similar all the matches in today's episode were, but I'm not going to complain. We've won all three, and now, to end the episode, FA Cup third round draw. Also, we get £70,000 just for winning that game, and whilst we're not short on money, we are losing money when we're not on cut runs and selling players. So any little extra income we can get from stuff like this, I'm going to give it a big thumbs up. Works for me. And a good day is about to get even better. FA Cup third round to wrap things up today. Premier League team teams enter the hat last year we got knocked out by Wolverhampton Wanderers let's find out who we're going to get today of course I am going to sit and automatically draw this you guys are going to get the lovely edited quick version of this this draw takes a long time but the suspense it has to be built up doesn't it we have to save at the moment when you've got all these big teams coming out of the hat you wanted to see your own name I thought for a second, well, Wrexham have got Newcastle, just as a reminder. Wrexham are in the Premier League in this save game, so it's not nearly as impressive. Tottenham. Wouldn't mind Tottenham not got Tottenham. A lot of Premier League teams have already come out of the hat. Very selfish of them. Um, you know, we'll, we'll take a Man City. We won't take a Man City. They're taking on Bristol Rovers. Burnley's not sexy, is it? We've not got Burnley. Dorkin. Imagine if you got a team in the Vanarama National South. That'd be anticlimactic. They've just got Brentford. Fair play to them. 
Ah, oh, ah, mm, mm. Mansfield. I didn't even react to Mansfield coming out, and then I just saw our name pop up. I mean, that might be the most anticlimactic thing ever. They're 23rd in League 2. I suppose good news for away day fans. It's a new away day to add to our collection at Mansfield, the one cool stadium. Actually, that's quite impressive from this picture. And apologies to Barrow. Uh, yeah, sorry, Barrow. We're not going to be playing you anymore. That game's been moved because we're playing on New Year's Day against Mansfield. Has just dawned on me the next episode will come out on the 1st of January. And we're playing on the 1st of January. Is that some kind of omen? I don't have a clue. Oh, uh, maybe. M maybe. I feel like there's always a bit of rust when I've not recorded a video for a day or two. Hopefully it didn't show in this video and hopefully you enjoyed the triple header. Probably has made this video a longer one because of all the goals that were scored. But 4-1, 3-1, 4-2, that's very, very nice. We've got a lot of football to play between now and next episode. But next time out, FA Cup third round, we might partner that up with the game against Boston United, or if we beat Mansfield, maybe we'll do the fourth round as well in that one. Take things easy, have a lovely New Year's Eve, don't celebrate too hard. If you're hungover, fret not, Park to Prem's back on Monday. I'll see you guys then. I'm out.